as colorblind people, it can get pretty tedious always correcting the misconceptions of color normal people. No, we don't only see in black and white. No, I can't see through your red blouse. And no, I'm not clinically depressed. And as colorblind people, these truths are all self-evident. But just because you're colorblind doesn't mean that you are somehow immune from misconceptions about color vision deficiency. Today on Chromophobe, I want to be talking about one of the biggest misconceptions that colorblind people ourselves have. That is, that they might have two different forms of colorblindness. You don't. This is Chromophobe. Oh, okay, okay, so you want science? We, we can do science. Why do people think that they have two different kinds of colorblindness? Well, there are a number of misunderstandings that generally lead to this conclusion. Let's meet Jack, Kenny, Clara, and Peter, because my wife told me that naming them individuals A, B, C, and D was somehow dehumanizing. Jack found out that he was red-green colorblind, and this made sense to Jack because Jack always had issues differentiating between red and green. But Jack also had trouble mixing up blue and purple, which must mean that he was also blue-purple colorblind. Does this mean Jack has two forms of colorblindness? No, as I've explained before, the classical names of red-green and blue-yellow colorblindness are named after the opponency channels that they affect. That doesn't mean that those are the colors of confusion per se, although they are usually one pair of the colors of confusion, but someone who's red-green colorblind, like myself, will also be confused between blue and purple or green and brown such as the reason why I have thought for 25 years that peanut butter is green. It's not. Kenny took a colorblindness test online and was diagnosed as being moderate pro-tan. Now, Kenny was shocked because he never considered himself to be colorblind. And so Kenny did what any other person in denial of their colorblindness does and finds a second opinion. Kenny takes another test that he finds online and this time he's diagnosed as moderate do-tan. Well, crap. In just 10 minutes, Kenny's gone from being color normal to having two types of color blindness. Poor Kenny. But is Kenny really suffering from two kinds of color blindness? No. If we ignore the fact that a lot of color blindness tests online are completely made up garbage, even legitimate tests will often have contradictory results. That's because these tests might have made different assumptions about, for example, what screen you're going to take the test through, and it can simply just be quite difficult to differentiate between protan and dutan types of color blindness, especially in their milder forms. So one of Kenny's tests simply gave an incorrect answer. So Clara took a colorblind test on her laptop and was diagnosed as weak dutan. She told her parents, but they didn't believe her because they didn't think that girls could be colorblind. Silly parents. So Clara whips out her phone, takes the exact same test, and this time is diagnosed with weak protan. Does Clara have two forms of colorblindness? No, because taking the same test on different screens with slightly different color gamuts that probably haven't been calibrated can skew the results just enough to give you a different result. These tests can only be as accurate as the hardware that you're taking them on. Finally, let's meet Peter. Now, Peter's smart because Peter knows that colorblind tests featured on BuzzFeed or Pinterest are probably not going to give entirely reliable results. Instead, he self-tests himself with a recommendation from extremely knowledgeable and handsome YouTuber Chromophobe and downloads the Colorblind Check app to his Android phone. Peter knew that this app would be more precise, and so when his results gave him a PDT score of 630, he understood that this meant that he was two-thirds protan and one-third dutan. Does Peter have two forms of colorblindness? No, because Colorblind Check and some similar apps online communicate uncertainty in their diagnosis. So the PDT score of 630 means that Peter is probably protan, but he could be dutan instead, not both. Tests like this would rather communicate some kind of uncertainty in the results rather than confidently asserting that you have a specific type of colorblindness. And that's because there is a lot of uncertainty when you take a test on your phone. That uncertainty comes from uncalibrated screens, low screen brightness, having a, a blue nighttime filter on your phone, glare on the screen, or just user error. So do any of Jack, Kenny, Clara, or Peter have two forms of colorblindness? Well, it's theoretically possible, sort of, but in almost all cases, definitely not. But hey, let's get crazy. Let's methodically go through every one of the combinations of the six basic forms of colorblindness and evaluate each one. Doesn't that sound like fun? Oh, and if you don't know the basics behind these six names, then I recommend you first go watch my video on the types of colorblindness. There's a link in the top right corner. Otherwise, here's a short recap. 
Protonopia, Deuteronopia, and Tritonopia, all forms of dichromacy where you are missing your L, M, or S cones respectively and only have two cones remaining in your eye. Like me. Protonomaly, where your L cone is shifted closer to your M cone in the sensitivity spectrum, or Deuteronomaly, where your M cone is likewise shifted towards your L cone, are two forms of anomalous red-green trichromacy. And finally, Tritonomaly, the quiet middle child that everyone just really ignores. Tritonomaly comes about either from having less sensitive S cones or just by having less of them. It tends to be something that is acquired in your lifespan rather than something that you're born with, but in any case also tends to be quite mild compared to their protonomaly or deuteronomaly equivalents. Ah yes, and here's the grid of all 15 combinations of the six basic forms of colorblindness. Let's evaluate, shall we? First, you cannot mix a dichromacy and an anomalous trichromacy of the same type, such as protonopia and protonomaly, because a cone cannot both be missing and be anomalous, so these three combinations are out. Second, if you have two forms of dichromacy, you are missing two cones, and therefore you are a cone monochromat. These three different forms of color blindness are quite rare, but the most common of them is called blue cone monochromacy. Genetically, it is a combination of protonopia and deuteronopia, but no cone monochromat would ever describe their color vision, which is mostly grayscale, as being a combination, superposition, or average of protonopia and deuteronopia vision. It is its own type of color blindness, not two types. Third, deuteronomaly and protonomaly occur when your L and M cones get a little bit too close to each other. If you're missing one of those cones, then there's nothing for the other one to get close to it, so it can do quite a bit of shifting over the spectrum without actually having a significant effect on your color vision. In fact, if you have deuteronopia and a strong form of protonomaly, then that's just the same as having protonopia. Fourth, if you have strong forms of protonomaly and deuteronomaly, then your L and M cones essentially switch places on the spectrum and you are left with normal color vision. Will your vision in this case be inverted? Well, possibly, but that's actually a fundamentally impossible question to answer as is well covered by this Vsauce video. There are some combinations of specific strengths of protonomaly and deuteronomaly that when combined will yield a color vision that is slightly unique, that's different than the sum of its parts, uh, but that's a little bit of a tangent, so if you want to know more, I've left an explanation in the description. Fifth, tritonopia mixed with a red-green anomalous trichromacy like protonomaly and deuteronomaly is theoretically possible and would be called anomalous dichromacy. However, it's very rare and there are no proven instances in the scientific literature, and the few dozen people in the world that have this type likely have been diagnosed with some kind of Cohen monochromacy. Likewise, sixth, mixing tritonomaly with protonopia or deuteronopia. Now again, this is theoretically possible and would be called anomalous dichromacy, but considering that almost all forms of tritonomaly are significantly milder than dichromacies, the dichromacy, protonopia and deuteronopia in this case, would likely completely overwhelm the tritonomaly such that the tritonomaly would not show up in tests designed to detect it. Finally, mixing tritonomaly with protonomaly or deuteronomaly is again theoretically possible and a colorblind test should be able to detect both of those at the same time if they're both around the same severity, if they're both mild. But the prevalence, if the scientific literature is to be believed, would affect about one in one and a half to five million people. So probably not what you have. Well, that about takes care of the whole table, and uh, as we've seen today, it is theoretically possible to have multiple forms of color blindness, but it's either stupid rare or not something that can be detected through normal online tests. So, for most of you, I hope I've convinced you that you only have one kind of color blindness. For the rest of you that insist that you have two forms of color blindness, then I would implore you to go see an ophthalmologist. Not for your sake, but for their sake, because any one of them would love to get their hands on such a unique specimen as yourself. This is Chromophobe.